Welcome to our first video from Japan. In this video, we're going to be focusing around the Akihabara area in Tokyo, Japan. Along with a lot of other videos that we have planned, this is just the beginning of our trip, so stay tuned. We always wanted to come visit Japan, and now that it's become a lot easier to travel here and a lot cheaper, we decided to finally go. This is just the beginning, so be sure to subscribe and leave a like so you don't miss our future videos about Japan. Good morning guys, we just checked into our flight and we gotta go. This is the start of our journey to Japan. Our trip to Japan started with its first five days being in Tokyo, and Akihabara, where we spent two nights, was our first. Alright guys, so we're starting our journey to Japan, and I'm really excited. We woke up uh, at around 8 o'clock to get ready here, and we're leaving at around 12.30, and we'll keep you guys updated when we land. It's going to be a long flight, it's about 13 hours, but I can't wait for it to be over. Let's go. Alright guys, so me and Dylan both got the chicken. So far, it's looking pretty good. We finally touched down in Japan. All right, we're getting on the bus now to get to the airport. One of the first things we went to go do after landing at the airport was to go pick up our pocket Wi-Fi, which we ordered through Japan Experience along with some Suica cards. However, the Suica cards did not make it on time and we had to go without them, but uh, we decided to get into a line where you can pick up Suica cards from the machine and it will make you a card. However, the line was also too long for that, so I decided to try something I saw on YouTube, which was to just open up your Apple wallet and uh, add a Suica card in there and add some money to there, and it worked great, and we were able to get through with that. Let's see, let's see, let's see. And as you can see, it's just as easy as that. It was really helpful because not only did I have to worry about losing the physical card, but it was also able to work at the local convenience stores like Lawson's, Family Mart, and 7-Eleven, but also at vending machines. Now that we had our Suica cards all figured out, we were on our way to our first train ever in Japan, and our first stop was Akihabara. If you're worried about trying to figure out the train system in Japan, don't worry. It's very simple. I thought it was going to be a pain, but it actually is really simple and very well constructed and we were able to get to Akihabara after switching over only on one line and Google Maps was an absolute savior uh, helping us get through everything. It was super accurate and right on time with everything and it was a huge help. just got off the train right in front of Akihabara. This is actually one stop after Akihabara and we're about to walk to our hotel. After dropping our luggage off at our hotel and checking in, we decided to finally check out the main street in Akihabara and look for something good to eat. After finally making it to the more central area of Akihabara, we were greeted with tall buildings, LEDs, Itasha, and a bunch of cosplayers. It was really bizarre to see for the first time, but it was really friendly and it was a really great atmosphere and we had a great time walking throughout the town.
We're in Japan. We're in the center of Akihabara right now. Not quite the center, one street off. But we're here to grab something to eat because we're really tired from our flight. And we're here at Sukiya. I've heard a lot of good things about it, especially their beef bowl. So we're going to try it out today. Tsukiya is more of a fast food chain in Japan and it's really beneficial for us because they have uh, ordering through tablets which you can just press a button and get an English menu and very easily be able to see and read everything you want to order. So Don, what do you think about first crossing over here? It's sick. So we're staying in Akihabara, we're staying at the Super Hotel Akihabara tonight and we're gonna be here for two days. So tomorrow we're gonna try going to the park and try and we'll see what that is. She just got Tsukiya. It was, uh, me and Dylan both had the curry and rice. I had braised pork and you had the chicken. No, I just had regular pork. Oh, you had pork? Okay, yeah. sweet. So yeah, I had, I had the, I had the braised pork and Dylan had the regular pork. It was pretty good and it only cost $5, which was awesome. And I was full after that because we we're starving after the plane. But then we started walking around and Akihabara is for like all the anime, all the, you know, games, stuff like that. So it's kind of cool seeing all the stuff that I kind of like grew up playing, especially like Nintendo and Mario and stuff. So that was sweet. But uh, yeah, so we're just walking around trying to see the nightlife, but there's not too much of a nightlife here. So, but we're actually going to try and get some drone footage tonight and then go to the onsen later. But I'll let you guys know it's a late night and we'll see you guys tomorrow. next day of our vlogging guys I am here in Akihabara I decided to stop by the shrine the Hibashi Inari shrine which I've seen many times online it's like in the center of Akihabara and it's like very hidden away it's a very small shrine I just thought I'd stop by and give it a visit literally just kind of like this hole in the wall it's really cool I'm very glad I stopped by and I was able to find it but yeah Since we're in Akihabara, I figured I had to show you guys what the inside of a typical Akihabara store looked like. So this store was called Trader. It had a bunch of anime, manga, figures, and uh, games and stuff like that. A lot of retro. All the shelves were jam-packed and it was really hard to get footage, but I hope that you guys are able to see a little bit of the experience of what it's like shopping in a typical shop in uh, Akihabara. So basically, I don't know if you guys can tell, but uh, in the stores in Akihabara, it's not like your typical stores in the US or anywhere else. It's not this big layout. They go up and down, which is why there are these multiple floors, like five floors, staircase layout. Then we got the Star Wars Jedi Starfighter. Valid. Valid. School days. That's, that's wild, bro. That's wild. Oh my god. That's wild. Counter for the trip. Yeah, I mean, this is crazy. This is, uh, I can't believe they sold this, honestly. See, this was the store we were in earlier, in earlier. This is called Trader, and it's about six stories high, and you pretty much just go from floor to floor, and it has different sections of the store. Instead of like in America, you just have one big superstore all in like a, you know, with a big parking lot. No, here, everything starts going up before it starts going wider. So, that's a pretty cool thing about Japan. You wanna say what happens as you go higher up in the floors? Oh yeah, as you go high up in the, higher up in the floors, there is more um, adult content, pretty much, and uh, yeah. It's very interesting because uh, it's kind of crazy just like being able to walk up there and just see a bunch of stuff in public. It's wild, but you know, 
I mean, I guess welcome to Japan. Oh. I'm gonna fall victim to the gacha. Gacha is basically a system of gambling here in Japan, but it's not really. It's basically, you pay money, and you have a chance at getting one of the shown items. And it's completely random. So let's see what I get. Fennekin? Oh, so it is gacha. There's no guaranteed chance. It's completely random. Okay, so that's, don't do that. Uh, this is not worth it at all. It's not worth it at all, like whatsoever. The next morning, we woke up and realized that there was actually a festival happening in Akihabara. It is one of Tokyo's three most famous festivals, the other two being Sano Matsuri and Fukagawa Matsuri. We were super lucky to be in Akihabara right as the Kanda festival was happening because we had no idea it was happening, it was not even planned, but we got a great surprise and it was a great atmosphere and thing to witness, something that only happens once every two years. The Kanda Festival, or in Japanese, Kanda Matsuri, is hosted by the Kanda Myojin Shrine and happens on the Saturday and Sunday closest to May 15th every other year on odd numbered year. So we're at the festival here and uh, Dylan was here this morning but it's only gotten even crazier and there's a lot more people so I mean I hope you guys enjoy I honestly don't know what's going on but it looks crazy. Hundreds of people gather as each quarter of the city tries its best to make the most fantastic Mikoshi and show their support for their own area. Mikoshi are portable, hand-carried floats which they carry on their backs while chanting and singing. Alright, so Dylan, where are we going right now? Maid Ooh. Cafe. Maid Cafe. Where are we going? Maid Cafe. Yeah. Maid Dreaming. Oh, we're going to four floor. Oh my god, it's loud. Okay, let's go. <laughs> We got the Neko Park 
and uh, yeah, I can't wait to dig in, but I kind of don't want to eat it. It looks so cute. <laughs> Pretty good. And I got my clear file and my glow sticks. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So uh, as you can see from uh, the last couple of clips uh, and right before we entered, uh, I had no idea what we were going into and then all of a sudden it just hit. It honestly felt like a fever dream. But honestly, that, that is the experience of a maid cafe. That is the number one maid cafe, maid dreaming. And it was pretty fun, it was pretty fun. The live show, which we couldn't record unfortunately, was actually very good. The music and the dance it was very good, it was very entertaining. We had glow sticks we were waving around and everything. I even got this clear file, which I paid $8 for. It's a great deal, guys, great deal. <laughs> great deal. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, uh, they, yeah. Wow, that happened. Can I get a yum yum? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, the food wasn't actually as bad as people say. The omelet rice was actually pretty good. I enjoyed it. Right, Brian? Yes. Yeah, and Brian had a parfait. That was pretty good. The parfait was gas. All right. Moi, moi, kid. <laughs> I'm gonna okay. fucking stab you. All right, so. Yeah, I had the parfait, which was honestly really good. <laughs> I didn't even know. That was li I was literally like Dylan just said it was a fever dream. Wild. But I mean, it's a once in a lifetime experience, so you know, we kind of have to try it, but that was that was interesting. It's, that was very interesting. And yeah, we're going to go back uh, to the hotel now and hop into the onsen and tomorrow's a new day. Uh, it's so cold. <laughs> <laughs> Down, turn around. Oh, it's so cute, Becca. You wanna fucking go, bro? <laughs> I'm from New York. I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> you are really enjoying this, aren't you? <laughs> yes. This is fucking hilarious. <laughs> Beautiful. Can I get a moi moi kid? Can I get a moi moi kid? Moe, moe, kyun. So, as you can see right now, we are in a ramen shop. We are going to, we both got some uh, miso soup with uh, ramen noodles in it. It looks very good, so we're both going to try that out. This is our first time having actual Japanese ramen, so let's, let's see how good it is compared to the packaged, the packaged up ones you get from Walmart in America. Well guys, I'm beat. Today was a long day and uh, we're gonna have some miso tonkatsu and uh, I'm interested to see how, how it tastes. I'm so tired, can't wait to go to onsen and go to bed. I'm out of it. I'm done. KO'd. Everywhere. We went to the sky tree, we went to the shrine, and we were all over Akihabara. And there was also the festival, the festival today. That took a lot of energy out of me as well. There were some awesome pictures and videos from there that was sweet. But yeah, this pretty much ends our two day trip that we had here in Akihabara, and we are moving on tomorrow. Stay tuned. Well, we just finished over at Golden Ramen. It was very filling, I'll say that. It's starting to rain now, so we gotta go back to the hotel room. So we'll see you guys tomorrow, yeah.